Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel for a brand new episode of Quick Strike. You guys seem to really enjoy our round two preview, so we're bringing it back for round three. I hope you guys enjoy this one as well. Let me know in the comments down below how many games you think it's going to take for the Lightning to win, or if you think the Islanders are going to pull this one off. I'd love to hear your predictions down in the comments below. With that said though, let's get right into the video. <music> Welcome back to another episode of Quick Strike. My name is Jake Ricker. As always, I'm here with my good friend, Michael Wax. Michael, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. We finally know who our round three opponent is, and uh, I am very excited. I saw the boys get into Edmonton yesterday on uh, the Lightning's Twitter page, so I'm ready to go. Yep, round three is set. We are taking on the New York Islanders. They closed it out in game seven in, I would honestly say, dominating fashion as they beat the Flyers four to nothing in that one. Uh, not often you see a shutout in game seven. So uh, the Islanders will be our opponent. And let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the schedule, uh, which is actually interesting because if you're looking on screen now, there's only one game. And that's game one on Monday at 8 p.m. And the reason there's only one game is because we still don't know what the schedule is for round three here. The NHL has not released the schedule. I will put it up on screen if we do find out uh, as of this recording, which is Sunday morning. But hey, everybody, Editor Jake here. The NHL did just release that schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up on screen for you and talk about it real quick. So game one, as we mentioned before, is on Monday at 8 p.m. Obviously, uh, game two is going to be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. And then game three is on Friday at also at 8 p.m. And then game four Sunday is uh, 3 p.m. and not the normal 8 p.m. time. And as we talk about here in just a second, that's more than likely due to the NFL and them starting their games on Sunday. That's week one for the NFL. So game five is back to the 8 p.m. start. That's September 15th, which would be a Tuesday. And then game six is September 17th, also at 8 p.m. And that would be a Thursday. Then game seven is the only game that starts at 7.30 for the Bolts. That's September 19th and would be a Saturday. Obviously, games five through seven are uh, TBD if needed. But um, there's your schedule for you guys. It just came out. Um, it's Looking like a good schedule, though. I'm happy with what the NHL did. There's no back-to-backs in that in this schedule, which is a positive. And the only weird time is at 3 p.m., but it is understandable. If you're the NHL, you're trying to avoid the NFL as much as possible. So that's why that game is going to be earlier. So uh, with that said, let's get back to the show. Uh, just keep in mind that when we're talking about this schedule, we are talking about a uh, before the schedule was released. So. If you do want to jump to the next section now that you have the updated schedule, that's going to be at the 542 mark. We start talking about the Lightning and Islanders previous game. So that's all I have for you guys. I will see you in the next one. Uh, Michael, what do you think? Why is the NHL dragging their feet on this one? I think part of it has to do with the fact that the end, uh, the end of the NFL excuse me, starts uh, this week and they start on Thursday and they'll have games on Sunday. So uh, I think part of it has to do with the ratings battle, honestly, uh, with the NFL and the NHL in terms of, you know, getting eyeballs on their prospective sports. Because let's be honest, as much as we love the uh, NHL, uh, they're not then, compared to their competitors, especially the NFL, off of this long hiatus because of coronavirus. Uh, I think what would be a good idea, and Jake, you mentioned this before we started, was having the Lightning play on Monday, go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then take two days off so they're not conflicted with the NFL. And if they have to go head-to-head -head with the Monday night game, that's fine, because honestly, the Monday night games don't do that well. And to be honest, normally I would say go against Thursday night game as well, but because football is coming back on that Thursday, they're going to destroy in that battle. So I, I think the reason that the schedule hasn't been finalized yet is just because of that ratings battle. Uh, and they're just trying to figure out, you know, how can we maximize our profits after such a terrible coronavirus couple of months where we're not making any money? 
Right, and that's probably definitely the reason why. And you also mentioned this before the show as well. NBC broadcast the Sunday night game uh, for football. So they more than likely will have no games on Sunday because they obviously can't do both games. Uh, so that's probably also another reason why we haven't had a finalized schedule yet is because NBC is probably trying to figure out uh, what all they're going to do in finalizing their schedules on their end. Hopefully, though, we will have the schedule soon. Uh, only time will tell here, though. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if the, if the NHL puts in back-to-backs. I know we don't want that at all. and It would be kind of silly, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. So we'll see what they do with the NFL going going on in its first week. And that's the big thing too. This is the NFL's first week back. If this was any other week, I might say just go head to head with them and give it a try. But this is week one. So uh, you know, you're going to have a lot of attention on that. With that said, let's look at the previous games between these two, two teams. They have played three total games in the regular season. Game one, the Islanders beat the lightning five to two in game two. The Islanders also had five goals beating the lightning five to one. And then in Game 3, the Lightning took the win 3-1. to one. Now, there was one more game scheduled, and that was after the pause, though. So when the NHL shut down, obviously we did not get to play that game. But, Michael, uh, the Islanders had two pretty deciding games early on here in this season when the Lightning came back and won the third one. Does that concern you at all? No, not really. And one of the things that I talked with um, Jay Fresh Hockey about, by the way, if you haven't seen that interview, uh, it, it should be the next video on the channel. Click right up uh, in the top the right. I'll link it right up there. Exactly. Thank you. Self-promotion. Um, shameless plug. We were talking about how in Game 7, what was the more concerning absence, Sean Couturier or Matthew Barzell? And the reason that he said Barzell, and I feel a similar way about this, is because Barzell is literally the driving force of that offense. Every time that we had to face the Islanders, I wasn't scared about Anthony Bovillier or John Bailey or uh, Matt Martin, if you want to talk about, you know, fourth liners that could potentially make a difference. I was always be like, okay, double and triple team Matt Barzell. Because he is the the way that their offense runs. Of course, they didn't do that. Matt Barzell had two great games. The Lightning got handed two losses. And then in the third game, they found a way to limit him. And I think that... I'm not saying that he is a Connor McDavid-type player. But he is the most important piece to their team. Besides goaltending, of course. And... That is something that the Lightning are going to have to be wary of. And I think they are. Because we saw in Game 6 how bad they were when it came to driving play. Because the goals that they did get happened to happen off of rebounds. And happened to happen off of you know weird kind of plays where Carter Hart was out of position. Game 7, it was a lot more uh, conducive to their style. And Jay Fresh did mention that Barzell had a bad season uh, in terms of points, but in terms of driving play, he was better than he had been before in the previous season. So, uh, again, uh, not to ramble on too much about Matthew Barzell, he is one of my favorite players in the league. It's a shame he plays on the most boring team in the league. (laughs) But... uh, you know, make sure that he is contained and you should be fine. Yeah, and and something else to keep in mind here too as well is that, remember, the Lightning were not playing good at the beginning of this season. They actually struggled quite a bit, especially before the trip to Sweden. So, uh, And the Lightning played the Islanders pretty early on. So that could also be a little bit of a factor on why the Islanders so handily won those first two games. But also, as we mention all the time, this is the playoffs. In the regular season, games really don't matter that too much uh, because anything can happen in the playoffs. But with that in mind, let's look at the team stats between these two teams. Uh, You're seeing on screen the playoff stats. Last time we did talk about regular season stats, but this time we're looking at their stats within the playoffs. The Lightning... Uh, on the power play, it's 17 points percent. For the Islanders, it's 18.2 percent. Uh, goals. Oh, there's a mistake on there. Uh, that second one is actually penalty kill, not goal fours. 
per game. Uh, penalty kill lighting are 81.3% and the Islanders at 81.4%. Goals four per game for the Lightning, it's three. And for the Islanders, it's 3.33. And as for goals against per game, the Lightning at 2.31 and the Islanders at 2.07. So the Islanders actually beat the Lightning in every single category in this one. Uh, and, you know, I think this is going to be a tough opponent for the Lightning. I think that the Islanders are a very good team. They play a very different style of hockey. So I don't think the Islanders will be taken lightly. This is going to be a tough matchup, We, especially when it comes to special teams. With the Lightning supposedly still without Stamkos, we don't officially know Kucherov's status, although it looks like he should be back for Game 1. Penalty kill is going to be very important in the power play because the Islanders seem to be a little bit of the better team in these situations, and that could be a big deciding factor in the series. Well, just a counterpoint, and I'm not trying to say that you're wrong. I think you bring up a, a really good point. But the playoffs are not based off of special teams. I think we saw that 100% in the Columbus series where we got nothing uh, in terms of penalties called for us. We got plenty called against us, and the penalty kill was good. But we didn't really get anything called for us, and we still found a way to win that series in five games. So you're right that it is important, and we did the Lightning need to find a way to shut down the Islander power play and find a way to break through their penalty kill, which is something that I notice is that they have a stack the blue line approach, which if you are the Lightning, stop the drop back pass. That is the most important thing you have to do because if they're stacking the blue line, and you make a mistake on that drop-back pass, it is a shorthand of breakaway. And I love Vassy, but I don't want to make him do all the work. So, you know, especially in battle is important. The fact that they are leading in goals four does surprise me a little bit, but they were playing two high-octane offensive teams in the, the Capitals and the Flyers in the first two rounds. So that has a little bit to do with it. Also, the fact that Sergei Borovsky was horrid in the playing rounds. But, you know, the Lightning focused on a defensive-minded approach in these first two rounds, and they were successful at it. So it, it's going to be very interesting. We'll get to our picks later, but uh, I could easily see this going seven games. Yeah, for sure. And you're right, the special teams you know, may not be the deciding factor because you're right, the Lightning have shown that they can – um, be able to to fight off that issue, and in, in, uh, especially being without Stamkos, as I mentioned, um, in the Columbus series, especially where they didn't have any power plays and they had so many penalties against. But you know, with every team, if everything is different, so uh, we'll have to see how this one plays out. Um, I think this will be more like the Columbus series uh, with the defensive mindset, but we'll have to wait and see here because it almost seems like the Islanders have played two completely different games uh, where they played some defensive games, very defensive games. And they've also shown that they have the ability to play fast and score the goals when they need to, because that's the kind of teams they've played, as you mentioned. But uh, let's take a look at the difference makers that we have for this series. Uh, and that's going to be Anthony Sorelli for the Tampa Bay Lightning and Josh Bailey for the New York Islanders. Uh, Anthony Sorelli, you're seeing, seeing his playoff stats on screen now. He has two goals, three assists, and five points in these playoffs. And for the Islanders, Josh Bailey has two goals, 15 assists, and 17 points. By the way, Josh Bailey's 15 assists is fifth in the NHL uh, when it comes to playoff assists. So Josh Bailey, definitely somebody to be looking out for and someone that can really set up the Islanders when scoring goals. 100%. Uh, and, you know, I talked about Matt Barzell, raved about him. But, you know, Josh Bailey is that guy when it comes to setting up plays as well. He has been a misused person in Barry Trotz's system over the past two years um, where he has scored more, but he is put in different situations than I think he was used to under uh, Jack Capilano, who was before Barry Trotz. Uh, I don't know if the Lightning are prepared for playmaking Josh Bailey rather than goal-scoring Josh Bailey, who they saw in the 2016 playoffs. And I know that was a long time ago, but Josh Bailey tortured them uh, with goal-scoring, tortured Ben Bishop specifically with goal-scoring. 
Uh, I don't know if the Lightning are ready for a different type of Josh Bailey. As for Anthony Sorelli, the dude just has to pick it up. Um, five points in 13 games is fine. Like, it's not great, but it's it's fine. But for Anthony Sorelli, it's unacceptable. Uh, he's been lackluster in the faceoff dot. He's been lackluster when it comes to defense. He had a spectacular game five against Boston. Don't get me wrong. He had a goal. He was very good defensively. He was better in the faceoff circle. But against the Islanders, you're going to need to play your best hockey. Is Anthony Sorelli ready for that? I guess we'll have to see. That's why he's a difference maker. One more point that I want to make about Sorelli in particular, and I didn't want to choose Johnny Gord uh, for a second time, but you know this applies to Gord as well. You have to plant yourself in front of the net, but you can't. You have to plant yourself in front of the defender, and you have to have long range tips. And we haven't seen that very often from the Lightning. But what the Islanders love to do when they set up their defensive scheme is cover man-to-man in terms of, okay, you're going to plant yourself in front of the net. I'm going to plant myself in front of you so that that pass or that shot never gets through to you. And if it does, I have enough faith in my goaltender to make the save. So the Lightning need to find a way to get in front of you know, Andy Green, for example, and tip shots home from a longer range than usual. Absolutely, and I think uh, a lot of us can hope that that Game 5 from Anthony Sorelli is the start of him starting to play a lot better. Obviously, as you mentioned, he was very lackluster in the beginning, but hopefully he can continue what he did in Game 5, and we can see him start to break out. He's definitely a huge part of this team. We've seen in the regular season, he can score a lot of shorthanded goals. Uh, he can stop plays defensively, so Anthony Sorelli could be really important to this team to this team if they you know maybe start taking too many penalties so hopefully he can start to play like he did before and I don't think he even needs to be scoring goals or anything like that you know it can be hard to score goals in the playoffs but especially you mentioned in the faceoff circle the Lightning have struggled in the faceoff circle which I actually get to more in a minute but you know that that can make a huge difference especially uh, in in these playoffs so hopefully Anthony Sorelli gets going we'll have to see what he does Josh Bailey also a huge threat especially with his uh, assist making ability so the lighting will have to keep an eye on him and making sure that lanes are not open for him to uh, be able to pass the puck so easily but Uh, Also, you mentioned the former series the Lightning have had against the New York Islanders. Quick fun fact that I saw uh, on Twitter, actually, is that the Lightning have played the Islanders twice in the playoffs and have beaten them both times, both in five games. And the first time they did that was in 2004 to win the Stanley Cup. Well, not to win the Stanley Cup, but that was in their Stanley Cup run. So uh, nothing that really obviously says anything. This is a completely different year, but... A fun fact nonetheless. With that said, let's get to the keys to the series. The Lightning, and that's number one, take away the goalie's vision. Number two, dominate the face-off circle. And number three, guard Barzell. And you mentioned that. I think I just butchered his name, but you mentioned that before. So, Michael, what do you think about these keys? I mean, we mentioned all three of them in the course of this uh, show so far. Uh, Take away the eyes of goaltender. Uh, Make sure that you are creating good screens that also allow you to tip the puck in if necessary and allow yourself to get behind those defensemen. Like, I I don't know if Johnny Boychuk has played in these games, but he's a prime example of it. Andy Green, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, Cal Clutterbuck uh, is a forward that likes to play that type of uh, style. So, you know, Make sure that those guys are screening their own goaltender. you got to take the weight away the eyes. And we talk about that all the time with Vasilevsky. The only thing that's stopping him is the ability not to see the puck. And all these crazy larceny saves that he makes, he's always keeping an eye on the puck. If you take away his eyes, he's got no chance. Number two, dominate the face-off circle. I have no problem, and I... A huge supporter of his, but I have no problem with potentially seeing if Mitchell Stevens is ready uh, because he is, besides Braden Point, the best face-off person on this team. Braden Point has dominated the face-off circle in these playoffs. I believe he's over 65%, which is crazy because, you know, you look at his career progression, that's not something that you would expect. He's always been around that 
you know, 45 to 50 range. 65% is amazing. Everyone else has struggled, whether it's Gord, whether it's Gudro, whether it's Coleman, whether it's uh, Paquette, whether it is Tyler Johnson taking faceoffs, whether it's uh, Anthony Sorelli. It, it has not been for any taking faceoffs. So you really need to determine, you know, how are we going to generate offensive chances against a defense-minded team? Well, we're going to force shots on their goalie. Their goalie's going to have to cover it, hence a faceoff which you then have to win to maintain possession. Because if you don't, they're just going to clear it out. And they're going to play their game. Uh, number three, heavily guard Barzell. Uh, dominant. Again, <laughs> I don't know what else I could say about him. He is, he is so good at driving play. And uh, it is going to be really interesting to see the contract that he gets this offseason, uh, considering the amount of points that he put up this season. But in terms of this particular series... You have to take a chance once in a while when it comes to guarding him. Because he can make plays that I don't think a lot of people can. So, you know, take away his ability to make you pay. Yeah, and I think something else that's also really important for the Bolts in this series is how they come out in Game 1. The Lightning have lost Game 1 both times in these playoffs and come back then to win uh, the rest of the games, but game one is going to be important, I think, for the Lightning. If, if they can come off to a better start than they normally do, especially off with some uh, after having some days off, I think that that could be a huge, huge push for them, a huge boost uh, through the rest of these series. But uh, before we get to before we wrap up this video, let's talk about our picks. Uh, Michael, I'm taking the Lightning, obviously, in this one, and I'm going to take them in six games. I think the Lightning have a very good team this year. I think. If there's any good year for the Lightning to win the Cup, I think it's this year. Uh, I think the Islanders will definitely take a couple of games. They're definitely, you know, if they end up playing their style, that very defensive style, I think the Lightning will struggle. I think this is going to be a tough opponent, but I still think that the Lightning offensive firepower and Vasilevsky and Net will take over and they win this in six games. I agree with that. I mean, we already did our graphic, so I can't really change my pick. Uh, I also chose the uh, the Lightning in six. Uh, the main reason I did is because I think that those you know key contributors for the Lightning are going to step up, and by key contributors, I mean Sorelli and Gord and Coleman, and someone like Zach Gosian on the blue line. Mikhail Sarkachev is going to have to step up as well. Um, I think that the Islanders will take a couple of games. They are. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Columbus, to an nth degree, they are a well-coached team with a fantastic dual set of goaltenders and a good defensive scheme. And the reason I say that they're better than Columbus is because I think the reason that we got nervous against Columbus was because of what happened last year. But the Islanders, a lot of people are saying, well, it's just Columbus. No, they're better than Columbus. They will stretch it down even further. They will find a way to score goals. I think they can easily take two games. They might take three. Uh, and they they could possibly take the whole series if uh, they wanted. But uh, I'm a Lightning fan, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to say Lightning. You're going to stop them in six. So, you know, hopefully uh, things work out well for them. I'm not going to get too panicked based off of one win or loss. But if things start to go south, I, I think we're going to see a lot of the fan base go, man, we should have been talking about the Islanders. And I, I'm just going to sit there being like, yes, you should have, because they're better than Columbus. So. Yeah, that's that's very true. And, and you also, you mentioned coaching. Uh, Barry Trotz, who is the head coach of the, the New York Islanders, is a very good coach, obviously. He has beaten the Lightning before in the Eastern Conference Finals. Many people have talked about him being – you know, the better coach when you look at a head to head coach coaching matchup between him and John Cooper. Now, that's also mostly the John Cooper haters wanting to get him fired. Uh, but Barry Trotch is a very good coach. We've talked about the Lightning having to fight all their demons in these playoffs. Well, Barry Trotch is it for this round. He beat him in the Eastern Conference Finals with the Washington Capitals, and now the Lightning will have to look to send him home this time. So uh, with that said, uh, that's all we've got for you guys today. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you don't miss out on more content like this. we got a lot of exciting stuff coming your way very soon, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. As always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and go Bolts.